Today we have this really cool integral that Michael Penn solved using some of his favorite techniques involving multivariable calculus. So I'm going to solve it using some of my favorite tricks today. And we'll start off simple by using an integration by parts approach, noticing that we have 1 by x squared dx, which of course equals the differential of negative 1 by x. So we can write the integral i as the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 minus e to the negative x squared d negative 1 by x. And on integration by parts, we have negative 1 minus e to the negative x squared divided by x with the limits being 0 and infinity minus with this extra negative sign canceling that out. So we have plus the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by x times the derivative of this function, which is 2 times 1 minus e to the negative x. And because of the chain rule, we have a negative, no wait, positive e to the negative x dx. Now to evaluate the first term in the limits as x approaches infinity and 0, we'll notice that as x approaches infinity, e to the negative x approaches 0. So we have this 1 minus 0 divided by something approaching infinity structure, which of course evaluates out to 0. But what about the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus e to the negative x squared divided by x? Well, as x approaches 0, we have e to the negative x approaching 1. So that's a 0 by 0 shape we have, which means we should use L'Hopital's rule and differentiate the numerator and denominator. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus e to the negative x times 2 times, again, e to the negative x divided by 1. Now as x approaches 0, we have this thing approaching 1 and this thing approaching 1 as well. So we have 1 minus 1, which is, of course, 0. And that's pretty convenient because the first term just crashes out to 0. And all that implies that i just equals twice the integral from 0 to infinity of multiplying out this exponential term. We have e to the negative x minus e to the negative 2x divided by x dx. Now, I could solve this in one line by referencing the Frulani integral, but that's no fun because I haven't solved the general case for that integral on the channel yet. So yeah, that's something on my to-do list. So we're going to evaluate it the hard way by using one of my favorite tricks, that is Feynman's technique. And for that, we need to define an integral function i of some parameter alpha. In this case, I'll define it as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x minus e to the negative alpha x divided by x dx. So the target integral i equals twice the integral function evaluated at alpha equal to 2. And because using Feynman's trick is essentially solving a differential equation given some initial value, we need an initial value for this integral function. And a convenient choice would be alpha equal to 1 because that gives me the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x minus e to the negative x by x dx, which of course evaluates out to 0. So that's my initial value, i of 1 being conveniently 0. And my target case is i evaluated at alpha equal to 2. So now that we have the perfect plan in place, we'll differentiate the integral function with respect to the parameter alpha. And we can switch up the operators here because the integral function converges by Dirichlet's test. What do I mean by that? Well, I have these two bounded exponential functions being multiplied by a decreasing function that is 1 by x. So by Dirichlet's test, the integral converges. And on switching up the operators, I now have the integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to alpha by the Leibniz rule of e to the negative x minus e to the negative alpha x by x dx equal to the derivative of i with respect to alpha. So differentiating partially, I have this 1 by x term 
and this e to the negative x term is independent of the alpha parameter, so that's a zero minus e to the negative alpha x, and by the chain rule, I have this constant multiple of negative x there. So that means the x terms just cancel out, and we're left with the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative alpha x dx, which is of course pretty easy to evaluate. We have e to the negative alpha x by alpha limits zero and infinity. So as x approaches infinity, we have zero minus as x approaches zero, we have, wait, this was a negative alpha. Yeah, that takes care of it. Two negatives canceling out e to the zero is one, so we have one by alpha. Okay, great, that's the derivative of i with respect to alpha completely in terms of the alpha parameter. And now to recover the integral function by, of course, integrating with respect to alpha. So that means we have log alpha on the right plus a constant of integration c equal to i of alpha. And now to get rid of this constant of integration using the initial value condition we had, recall that i of one was zero. So we have zero equal to log one plus c, and log one we know is zero, implying that c equals zero. Okay, great. So i of alpha equals log alpha. And our target case, the target integral was twice i at two, which means it equals two times log two. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.